all right we are up and running um i hope you guys are able to see the screen posted here um, as usual we'll start with a couple of announcements uh day today fi friday november 20th so we are just uh, uh, one week away from thanksgiving break homework 10 is due uh next week so tuesday november 24th that's when homework 10 is due and homework 11 will be posted the same day uh, i will not make homework 11 due soon after you come back from thanksgiving break i'll get give you guys a few more days to to to, to work on that so friday after thanksgiving break that's when homework 11 will be due uh, studio 7 many of you have worked on it this past wednesday uh, please continue to work on it. It's due December 2nd. Studio 8, the last studio, which is based on Logic Works, is due December 9th. That's the last Wednesday for the semester. It is a Logic Works uh, based studio, so just simulations. Um, and it is about an elevator controller. I will post that studio document later today as well. Quiz 21, the daily quiz is available on Gradescope for you guys to answer, take a couple of minutes, answer it, and get done with it. All right, let's move on to what we were talking about. So a quick recap of the counter design process. We have already done this in the previous lecture, but we still have one uh, small element to still figure out in the design. So we'll do that. So we started with this counter design problem in which you guys gave me an arbitrary counting sequence you guys said we want our counter to count five four two seven three six back to zero and then five four two seven three right so and it goes in this pattern as long as you have provided power to your circuitry and your clock is running so at the at the active edge of the clock whether we are using positive edge triggered flip-flops or negative edge triggered flip-flops depending on which flip-flops we use the, the the active edge is either going to be positive edge or negative edge. But no matter which edge it is, at the active edge of the clock, the counter is going to go from five to four and four to two and so on. And the outputs of those flip-flops are actually dictating what is the value of the counter. So for example, if you have three bit counter, you essentially need three, three flip-flops. In, individually, they could all be the same or they could be all different. Now, if I go forward here, this is where we ended up with, because we said, all right, let's design this with three different flip-flops. We chose JC, a JK flip-flop, a D flip-flop, and a T flip-flop to do this counting business. So what is the value of the counter? That is essentially dictated by the outputs here, QB, QC, QB, and QA. QC being the most significant bit of the counter and QA being the least significant bit of the counter. So as your, and we decided it to be a positive edge triggered. So at the positive edge of the clock, at every positive edge of the clock, the counter is going to count up from five, four, and so on. And it'll circle around to zero. Uh, the steps we took to design this, the first step was to draw the state diagram to represent our counting sequence. So we started with five, we've circled around five, four, two, seven, three, six, zero, back to five and this keeps on going. Um, we also mentioned that the transition is going to happen at the active edge of the clock. And when there is an active edge of the clock, every current output of the flip-flop goes to the next output of the flip-flop. So QA, QB, QC goes to QA plus, QB plus, QC plus. And similarly, at the next positive edge, these will be QA, QB, QC, and these will be QA plus QB plus QC plus, and that circle will keep going. Remember, we, we did not do one case here. The one, ca oh, oh, let, let me finish what we did here first. So step one was to draw the state diagram in which we represented states with circles and then arrows to indicate the strain tra tra state transitions. And then we took the, uh, the, the design problem here of current state and next state. So this was, what happens if the, the, the counter is supposed to go from zero to what, to five? And one to what, I don't care because one is not included in my uh, counting sequence. And we, we, we listed out each possibility for current state and the next state based on our counting sequence. Now, in order for that to happen, the current state to go to next state, we need to provide certain inputs to our three flip-flops. 
JK, D and T. So we used excitation tables of those flip-flops to figure out what those inputs need to be in order for those transitions to happen. We looked up some excitation tables, we filled up those entries and then step three was to use K maps. In this case, we were using three variable K maps. The inputs of the K maps were the previous state, QC, QB, QA, and the uh, output was expressions for J, K, D, and T. We did those K maps here. We had to do four of them. We got the simplest expressions for J, K, D, and T inputs. And then depending on that, we connected some of them. So for example, we connected JC to high because JC, J was one. Uh, we also represented a, a, an OR gate here for the K input. So this goes over here, but we did not draw out every possible combinational logic. So we did not go through and complete this and this, and oh, actually we did this. Uh, we didn't do this and this, but I suppose you guys are absolutely ready to do that. Like just a couple of uh, gates and then you would, uh, in, the inputs to these gates would be coming from the output of the flip-flops and then the output of the gates would go into the D input and into the T input of the two flip-flops here. All right, so the question that we are, that's where we stopped. That's where we stopped in the previous class with this diagram. Now the question is, given that we have already implemented our counter, we have designed the counter and we have like put it together in terms of hardware, we have put it together so it is fixed now. Right, so it is, it's not like it's gonna keep changing, it's fixed. Now, given the implementation of this flip-flop as shown, what is going to happen if our counter arbitrarily starts up with a counting sequence such as zero, zero, one, right? So the question is, what happens if, because when you randomly, when you power up a circuit, it can power up arbitrarily in any in any uh, in any state. So, if it is any state, what would happen if it powers up in one of the skipped states? You see, zero zero one, which is a counter value of one, was our skipped state. So, what would happen then? Would it ever go back into this counting sequence? Would it never go back into the counting sequence? Let's figure it out. So what I'm going to do is based on, so that's that's what my question is. What happens when, let me write that question down here. What happens when counter starts at power up in one of the skipped states. And we know that in our example, the skipped state was one. So let's try to figure it out. What happens when it starts in one, right? So in order to figure that out, I'm going to have to go back to this table here, right? Now this table says, one, when you start up with one, the output is don't care. But it also has excess over here, right? All these are don't cares because of that. But then these don't cares actually went into K maps. And in some cases we included in them, uh, included them in a group. And in some cases we did not include them in a group, which means when we included them in a group, they behaved as one. And we, when we, did not include them in a group, they behaved as zero. So we are essentially looking for uh, the excess when QC, QB, QA are one, zero, zero, one, right? So let's go over here and take a look. Which element are we looking at? So we are looking at QC is zero, QB is zero, and QA is one. So right here, right? That's the element that we are looking at. So this element here, this element here, and this element here, right? So those are the four elements that we are looking at. Now, if you see in the first three cases for J, K, and D, right? This, this, and this, we did not include that X in the group, which means we treated that as a zero. Zero here, zero here, zero here. However, 
in this case, the last case, we treated that as a one because it was part of the group. Only for T, we included that in the group. So what I'm going to do is go back here and say, this actually is not X. We actually treated that as zero, 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 one, right? For the first three cases, it was zero. Only for the T, we didn't we treat it as a one even for the first? We Did we? Oh, you're right. Yes, yes, yes. Because the simplest, you are right. Because the group was the whole thing. You're absolutely right. Because the group was the entire thing. All right, so that was one. All right, let me go back here and change this. Thank you for catching that. All right. So now we have figured out what our implementation has caused our excitation tables to be, right? The next step is to figure out what these are going to be. Because we know the previous state, we know the excitations, so we should be able to find out QC plus, QB plus, QA plus. So can you guys help me with this? Uh, can you guys tell me what QA plus is going to be? So we'll start with QA plus. What do I need to look at? So students online are saying it should be a zero. Uh, so what do I need to look at to find out QA plus? Which columns do I need to look at? QA and TA is absolutely right. So I would look at QA and I would look at TA. TA says toggle, please toggle. So it will toggle from, from one to a zero. Next, how about QB? QB plus is going to be what? This is simple. For QB plus, Jeff says it's zero, DB, all right, QB plus equals DB, so zero, absolutely correct. Because this is dependent on that. All right, last one, QC plus, what is QC plus going to be? One is absolutely right, because we are in the set state here or jump state there, right? So because we are jump or stay set, we are going to do that. So what is the answer? What happens when the uh, counter randomly powers up in the skipped state one? What would happen? What would be the next state here? Goes to four, absolutely right. So you see, we can complete this diagram by drawing in uh, another circle here and saying, if it powers up in 0, 0, 1, it would go to 4. You guys see that? So 1 to 4, and then it is in, in the circle, right? So if it starts here, it goes here, and then now it's in the circle, right? In the counting pattern. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. Questions about this? Questions about how to figure out what happens when the counter starts at power up in one of the skipped states. Remember, there could have been more than one skipped state, right? So you could have had two or three or four skipped states. Um, in that case, you would have to look at more of these uh, elements in the K maps and you would fill in more entries over here. Also note that sometimes you may never come back into the, uh, you may never come back into the circle, right? So that can also happen. It is all dependent on the result of the K-map, right? It's the result of, of this. It's all dependent on how you have implemented your counters. 
Okay, so let me stop recording here because this completes our counter design discussion.